Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir: Lucas's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty, I'll get some. <laughs> Alright then, it's not effing fine. <laughs> it's not effing fine. He reaches up to grab his ears to vis to viciously yank them down again. I don't even have a chance to react, it just happens too fast. Except it doesn't. His hands stop right before his ears, clenching tight enough that his claws might be stabbing into his palms. I can't see any blood, but that must still be painful. He holds himself there for a moment, face scrunched up and breath shaky. I can't say anything out of fear that he might just shatter into a million pieces. Relaxing his palms, he brings them back down with one loud release of air. He brings one of them up to his face, inspecting for any damage. He must not find any or doesn't care enough. You really shouldn't do that. I don't think about it. I just do it. It's distracting. Distracting from what? He opens his mouth but hesitates before he can give me an answer, ultimately closing it and looking away. I might be poking a little too hard. It's been a hard day for both of us. There's a quick motion of his eyes, looking over in my direction before looking down at his bed. It doesn't seem like he's avoiding me this time. Instead, it looks like he's considering something. Sit down and eat your food. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. I go to sit at his feet, but he thrust a hand forward, blocking where I was going to sit. You don't have to sit down there. Come up here. He shuffles across his bed, closer to the far side next to the wall. It leaves an open spot between him and the nightstand, where many different books on his phone lay. <clears throat> I don't like sitting on this side, but you might need the table for your food. His voice is nervous again, and it makes the atmosphere a lot more awkward suddenly. It's not unpleasant, but it reminds me of when I had to change, change with a cheetah and I had a crush, a crush on in the fifth grade. I end up just staring at the empty spot, unable to properly process what he's asking, and that just makes the blood rush to my face faster. Lucas is clearly getting more bashful as well. It's so silly. He's just asking me to sit next to him, not proposing marriage. Um, please? His voice turns into a squeak, cracking in the most adorable way that I can't help but laugh. It must have surprised him too because his ears perk up and he covers the sides of his muzzle like, like he's trying to keep his mouth out of view. I'm grateful for the interruption because it crumbles that, that tense mood away, finally releasing me from its grasp. Placing the pita on the only free available surface on the nightstand, I climb into, I climb into the I climb into the bed next to the fox. I'm barely inside. One of my legs is still hanging out. But it's the only way I'm, I'm able to keep a respectable distance between us. It is still a single bed, after all. What are you doing? You're going to fall out. It's okay. I'm steady here. Lucas just rolls his eyes, and I think that's the end of it until he reaches over and wraps an arm behind me, pulling me further into the bed and pressing me up against him. Even through his clothes, I could feel his fur peeking through the gaps in the fabric, tickling the part of my stomach not, not hidden by his shirt. It's softer than silk, and I have to fight the urge to run my fingers along his arm. Despite how shy he was earlier, he doesn't look to have any problem doing, problem doing this. In fact, he looks more annoyed that I didn't do it in the first place. But that quickly morphs into confusion at my gawking. But he quickly dismisses it. Now that I'm here, it doesn't feel so weird. It's really nice. His sheets are warm, and the quiet makes, it, and the quiet makes everything feel peaceful. It's a nice break from all the stress lately. Even Lucas looks more relaxed. Wait, quiet? Should there be? I should remember that we're not alone in this apartment, and I look in the direction of the door. I doubt that he'd care, but I can just imagine the teasing Ari's going to put us through if he catches us like this. But no one leaves the bathroom, even after a minute of silence, only the sound of Lucas clacking away at his laptop. He'll be there for another half an hour. I don't know what he's doing in there, but, he always, but he's always like this. Oh, okay, that makes sense. He seems like the type who'd groom himself. I groom myself and it only takes a couple of minutes. His nonchalant demeanor reminds me that this is someone I shouldn't have to have to worry about. Ari seems to really care that Lucas has a that Lucas has a friend and I'm filling that role. It's nice for both of us. I reach over and pick up my food, noticing the piles of books sitting on the back of the stand in the process. I expected textbooks or something more sophisticated like Stephen King or Mark Twain, but it's series targeted towards children and teens. New ones at that. Are you reading those? Yeah, what about them? They just look like they, they, they just don't look like something I'd expect you to read. <clears throat> One second, y'all. Let me uh, drink some coffee. Oh yeah, boy, that's the stuff. I'm worried I'm being rude as I take bites between speaking, but it doesn't look to be bothering him at all. He's more interested in the books I'm referring to. Then he presses up against me, leaning so close that his breath blows against my jaw. I take a sharp breath in. He's only reaching over to grab one of the books, but the proximity causes reactions in me that I wasn't prepared for, nearly causing me to choke. Thankfully, it only lasts a few moments before he pulls back, he pulls back, but enough damage has been done, leaving me dazed in the process. I can't deny that I liked it, but I don't know if my heart could handle that again. 
book he's holding looks new. Something brought very recently. Something brought bought very recently, or brought. Yeah, it could be brought. Maybe even this week. It's got a rat resembling a secret agent alongside a cat in regular attire and a large brutish rhino in a tuxedo. Looks like something I'd read in middle school. The bad guy. It looks sounds kind of like the bad guys. The title. Oh, it's called My Own Reality: The Dimensional Gateway. Okay, oh my, fuck me, I guess. It looks like a book, a book on a running series, an eight adorning the spine in a stylish font that makes it look like a dragon. It's, it's well below my reading level, but even children's books tell good stories. I'm a fan of this author. This is a new series done under a pen name. The usual stuff is more medieval fantasy revolving around politics. That's a bit of a jump to children's books. Not really. Sure, the setting is different now, but it still keeps that wonder, that, wonder to the writing that makes it enjoyable. Despite there being three main characters, they're fleshed out enough that despite their bad first impressions, you still care for them. That's a lot more that's a lot more in-depth analysis than I was expecting regarding a kid's book. I didn't think it was so serious. It doesn't need to be that deep, and it's just for kids after all. But the way Lucas says it makes me want to agree with him. It's more passionate than I'd ever heard from him heard him sound before. It reminded me of when he helped me with my work earlier. I actually prefer this series to his more serious work. Sometimes his books are too dour, but this is just whimsical. Despite the challenges everyone faces, they're always there for each other and have fun. <sighs> There's a fondness to his voice now. There's a part of me that hopes he's thinking of us now, that I'm helping him find this world a little brighter. That he considers Lay, Lily, and Oscar to be his friends too. Lee, Lily, and Oscar to be his friends too. What's it about? The premise sounds silly on its own. You just find it stupid. Tell me. I, I want to know. Well, it's about a high schooler, Kelly. He's the cat. After discover discovering that magic exists, he's made to join a clan of mages led by a dragon. He shows me the back of the book where a golden dragon is holding a blue orb between his hands. It's like he's trying to contain the power within it. Kelly discovers that creature from another dimension had been creatures from another dimension have been coming have been coming, and he joins in learning magic so he can help. The other two on the cover are his classmates, Hugo and Gerald. One of them is a rich asshole, and the other has a curse that's slowly taking over his body. They don't like each other at first, but they've got but they've gotten closer as it goes on. He keeps rambling over about the plot for the, about the, for the first couple books. How Kelly barely managed to steal the orb that's on the back cover by channeling thunder magic, or how Hugo is actually a time mage. I noticed something else that makes my heart skip a beat, too. He's smiling, and it's a bright, beautiful smile. One I barely get to see, but always takes my breath away. I didn't realize you were so passionate about books. I knew you liked them, but not just not this much. I told you, they're easy to understand, and they take me to places far away. Takes him to places far away. I wonder if that's why you agreed to come with, uh, come with us tonight. It's not an adventure, but maybe to someone who doesn't go out often, it, it might seem like it. I should talk to Ore about this later. What about you? Huh? What do you like? It's an easy question. There's very little questions in my in life that are easier to answer than what's coming than what's something you like, but I still just bear, just still just stare blankly at Lucas. There's a part of me that hopes he notices something's wrong and just changes the subject, but he just holds my gaze, waiting patiently for the answer. All right, one second, y'all. Coffee time. Oh yeah. I, I really like classical music. Well, I guess music in general. Really? Yeah. Well, my mom always takes us to orchestras when I would always take us to orchestras when I was younger. I used to love sitting in the giant theater listening to them play. I've never really been into music. My parents made me learn the violin, but I wouldn't. But wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm enthusiastic about it. My mother loves watching me play, so I wasn't so it wasn't bad at all. He mentioned this before, but it didn't really click with me until now. I feel really from what just happened. That's amazing! You have to play it for me sometime. Did you bring it with you? It's hard to keep the excitement out of my voice. I've always loved watching vi a violinist play up close. There was a small period when I was younger that I wanted to play, but I could never get it to cooperate with me. Yeah, the case is under the bed. I don't want to play it now. Maybe another time. It's disappointing, but at the same time, I can't help but be a little happy. It's rare that I get to talk about this whole, about this kind of thing. I haven't indulged in the musical arts in, well, a long time. If you like music so much, you should talk to Ore. He's performed in musicals before. I don't think he sings, but he might get you seats to one of some or something. You think he could do that? Yes. If there's one thing that Martin knows how to do, it's get it's get things to go his way, even if it's very irritating. I wonder if Lucas would want to go to one sometime. He talked about Ore's musical performances as if he's never been to one, so it might not be his scene. But it couldn't hurt to ask someday. By the way, while I was looking up stuff about Helena, I found a guy named Costia who used to be study partners with her. I contacted him if he could speak to us about her, and he replied while you were in the shower. We're meeting him tomorrow. We? 
It causes him to it causes him to pause and he mulls the conversation over in his head, like he's unsure what part of that of that I'm confused about. Do you not want to come? No, I do. I just just a bit out of the blue. That's all. Right. Sorry. It's no problem. So, do you know anything about this guy? He shakes his head. There's a faint glint of irritation in his eye. Something about this must be an annoying it must be an annoying spot for him. Not really. All his social media contains little to no information about him. I only know he was her study partner from an old post Helena made mentioning the two of them at the library together. I don't even know I don't even know what species he is or what he looks like. Gusty has a weird name. He must be foreign. It's Russian. That piques my curiosity, but it doesn't indulge me at all. Instead looking away. This isn't like his usual bashful avoidance. It's something a bit more personal. You don't have It's fine. I used to know someone Russian when I was younger. I've been casually learning it for a long time. Nothing substantial. I can't speak it, but I can recognize some words. That's amazing! It really isn't. I don't know shit, and I've been learning it for years. It's nothing to be proud of. It's still more than I've done, though. Lucas is really hard on himself, but I feel like he has more talent in his tail than I have in the rest of my body. I can't imagine how much hard work he puts in. The conversation is put on pause as the bathroom door opens and Ari walks out, wearing just as little as the last time I watched someone leave that room. He takes a step out before stopping, looking over at the two of them with a looking over at the two of us with a wicked smile across his face. I'm not able to keep my eye contact and I look over at Lucas, who doesn't look bothered in the slightest. Oh, that's adorable. That's, I know the two of you would look cute together. I told you, we're not dating. Not yet, babe. Give it time. Lucas just lets out a sigh and opens the book, flicking through pages until a little flap of paper falls out. It's not a traditional bookmark. Instead, it's a photo. I can see a fox in it, but he hides, a, hides it away before I get a good look. Maybe I'll ask him about it later. I don't think I should disturb him while reading. I check up on Ara and... He's pulling off his towel, leaving only seconds to look away before I get an eyeful of Martin. No one in this apartment has any shame, none of them! Just to prove my point, Lucas is watching me like I'm, like I'm the crazy one for trying to avoid staring at the person changing next to me. Then again, if this is the norm here, then I am the weird one, aren't I? With some stroke of luck, Ari doesn't comment like I expected him to. I guess he didn't notice me looking away, or maybe he's giving me some pity. One second, y'all. It is coffee time! Mm. Delicious coffee. Trying to distract myself, I look over at Lucas's novel, but without any context, I just feel lost. There's a part of me that feels it's rude to read while you're hosting someone, but it's not like Lucas wanted to do this anyway. Kelly just discovered there's a dimensional wormhole that's been letting a group of shapeshifters enter their world and infiltrate their government. Oh, you said Hugo is a time mage, right? Why doesn't he just go back in time and tell everyone? Lucas smiles at that. I feel a little guilty for thinking he was rude. He's just indulging in someone who just someone he enjoys and is trying to show it off to me. Despite having time magic, he's actually very restricted. He can only go back a day, and if he tries to go back further, he causes a lot of stress on his body. What's the rhino? He doesn't have any magic. He's Hugo's butler, and even though they're any even though they're at the same age. They're the same age? The cover made him look way older than the rest of them. I thought he was some kind of mentor or something. Yeah, it's a running joke that everyone thinks he's an adult. He doesn't have any magic, but he's trained in fighting mages. Unfortunately, he's cursed to go berserk whenever there's too much magic around him. I haven't read much books other than the required reading I had to do in high school, but this actually sounds interesting. I wonder if Lucas would let me borrow one of his books sometime. Though, all this does give me an idea. Hey, you mentioned you hadn't decided on a major yet. Why not... Excuse me, why not English or literature or whatever it's called? You sound as passionate as Oscar does when you talk about it. He scoffs at the comparison, but doesn't give me a reply. Instead, quietly mulling it over. I don't think he's considering it, but he feels but it feels closer to he's trying to find the way to articulate his thoughts. I, I don't think that's a good idea. English isn't a good field for jobs. Well, that might be true. It sounds more like he's making an excuse rather than what he genuinely thinks. What's he hiding? But if you really love it, wouldn't that be a good thing to try? You could be a teacher. You did a really good job helping me yesterday. He shudders at, he shudders at, the, suggest, shudders at the suggestion, and I want a facepalm. Of course he wouldn't be comfortable being a teacher. Just being in school gets him on the brink of a panic attack. There's no answer for him for, from him for there's no answer from him this time, and I think we both know why. Instead, there's an awkward silence between us. The sound of RA changing has stopped, and I hesitate to glance in his direction. Thankfully, he's lying in his bed, covered up. He's got his phone in his hand, and his eyes are meeting mine. There's a look of warning in them, telling me to tread lightly. He makes no moves to stop me, so I think I have his permission to go ahead with what I'm about to ask. Why are you so uncomfortable in schools? He grips the book harder, claws pressing into the top of the page. He closes it and hands it to me, to which I quickly place it on the nightstand behind me. There's a part of me that feels like I shouldn't be bringing this up with Ari in the room, but it feel, but if he's uncomfortable with him being there, I think Lucas would let me know. 
I've come to learn he doesn't keep his thoughts in his head. I didn't have a very good experience with them. People are shitty and I did some awful things. His face morphs into a cringe and I can tell he's reliving some memory that must connect to whatever he's talking about. I want to ask him to elaborate, but this time someone does interfere. Hey, Lulu, can you help me with some of my work? Maybe Walter can join in too. We can have a cute little study session. Sure, let me get some of my things. Lucas shuffles out of the bed, almost tripping on the sheets in the process. He doesn't make much of a fuss about it and heads into the kitchen to rummage through the court to the drawers. I'll just give him some time, okay? I expected Ari to be angry, but he's giving me a gentle smile before reaching over and cupping my cheek. It's such a delicate touch that I could almost believe it didn't happen. But it is, and that's enough to light up my face. I expect to hear Ari laughing, but he doesn't, opting to continue patting my cheek fluff. He likes you a lot, and I think you're good for him. Just remember to take your time. Okay, I will. I know you will. You're a good boy. Now let's hit the books. He gives me one final soft slap to the cheek before sliding out of his blankets, showing me that he's showing me that he's wearing very little. I don't know why I expect anything else. But he's right. I don't think I hurt Lucas's feelings, but I, th but I, but I don't need to push him. He's a pretty open book, and if I ask, he'll tell me if he's ready to. Just need to take it one step at a time. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. I gotta get ready for work. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye